All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er draft video. In, to finish up the third round, the Niners drafted Cameron Latu, a tight end from Alabama. Let's talk a little bit about the Alabama tight end. Uh, interesting, interesting player for sure. You know, he only didn't spend a lot of time at Bama, uh, but he's a versatile player. He's a receiving tight end. That's what he is. He's not a blocker. He's a receiver. Um, and he's inexperienced, so it's a little bit of a projection. But he's six foot four, about two hundred, close to two hundred and fifty pounds. He's kind of an H back type. He's very, very athletic. Um, he's definitely a weapon in the pass game. This guy can get up field. He can make ball, plays with the ball in, ball in his hands. He's not the most incredible run after the catch guy, but he's definitely an explosive athlete at the snap. Um, decent route runner. He can locate the ball. He doesn't body catch it. He blocks it with his hands, which is a good thing. And he runs with a little bit of power. You know, he can run through contact. He can pick up yardage. He's not the most elusive runner, but he definitely can run through contact. Um, and to me, you know, it's like he, he really hasn't played a lot of football. That If there's anything you could say about him, he hasn't played a lot. There's definitely some, some refining that needs to happen in his game. He needs to be refined as a route runner. Um, right now, you know, he uses his athletic ability, but he's not real, he's not real reliable or real refined, I should say, as a route runner. Um, and that's, that's something he's going to need to work on. He's not the biggest guy. So, um, his blocking to me is secondary for him. Um, you know, he's challenged as a blocker from time to time. He had a knee issue last summer. Um, but overall, you're talking about a guy who's got some twitch. There's some explosiveness. Um, he could be a solid backup tight end. He's more of a receiving specialist. I imagine he's going to give Ross Dwelly a run for his money. Some people feel like he even could be used as a backup fullback behind Juice, maybe even as a slot receiver. He's definitely a receiver. You know, he's not he's not a guy who um, who you're going to say, oh, you know what, this guy is is going to blow people off the line of scrimmage. He's a receiver, and that's his game. And he's you know he's a guy who um, you know he's he's got some ability. He's a little lean in the legs. He definitely could put on some more more pounds. Um, he definitely could play a little stronger. But you know he he can mo- make some move blocks in space against athletes. So there's you know there's there's a lot to like here in that this player I really believes best football is coming. He's had he's had times at Alabama where he's had some drops, but what I love is that he plucks the ball with his hands. He, he you know that's one if you're a body catcher, it's hard to turn a body catcher into a hands catcher. If you catch it with your hands, you got a shot. In the pros, they catch it with their hands. Um, if you if you're playing high school football, you want to catch it with your body. That's all right. You know, even some le- levels of college football, you could body catch. But in the pros, you got to pluck it with your hands. You got to catch the ball. But um, I think he could be a flexed out tight end. You know, the nice thing about Latu is there's enough movement ability where you could flex him out and use him as a receiver. What I like about him more, like I think there's a very good chance he takes Ross Dwelly's job. Why? Because Dwelly is in is a receiving tight end, but he doesn't have the the power. To, to to be a blocker, um, and he's not much of a blocker. Latu's a receiving tight end who averaged 14.1 yards per catch during his career in Alabama, but he does have more potential as an inline blocker. Um, you know, one of the things I've seen him, I've seen him get loose down the seam where he shows some, an ability to separate from the coverage. Um and, you know, he's, he's, he's got a little bit more speed. Like, one thing he doesn't do right now is he doesn't run all of his routes at full speed. He will over time. He needs refinement. Um, but he definitely is a guy that, that um, will catch the ball with his hands, has a little bit of pop, you know, as a, as a blocker, um, a little bit stronger than, you know, he's got some lower body strength issues. He needs to get stronger in the lower body. But he's he's pretty athletic and pretty strong, um, and he'll catch the ball with his hands. He'll give you a little pop as a run blocker. He'll sustain his his blocks out in space, um, which is a key key element, you know. So as far as he definitely needs to work on his strength, 
and he needs to get stronger as an inline blocker. To me, this is a receiving tight end who needs to get stronger as a blocker. Now, he didn't. Ha- he doesn't have a lot of dynamic highlights where he's running away from the coverage after the catch, but I really think it's in there. Um, you know, he he as a pass blocker, his base is not the most solid, but I think there's room for improvement there. Um, you know, he's got to have a bigger catch radius. That was another thing that I saw is that, you know, there, there were times where the ball, you know, was outside of his, his catch area and he didn't make a play on it. Uh, but what you're, what you're really looking at is a pretty athletic movement tight end who's big enough and strong enough to be a factor as a blocker. He's, he's less finesse than Ross Dwelly. He, you know, he, he probably will compete with Dwelly for that receiving tight end spot. If they keep four, or if they keep three, I should say, it's probably going to be Kittle and then Charlie Warner, and then this pick probably means that Dwelly is drafted off the roster. Um, so I, I think it's interesting. I mean, I, I wanted to see the 49ers get another receiving tight end. The, th- the thing with tight end that's, in, that's a key factor is you can have a receiving tight end, but if you put him in the game, he also has to be able to block. You can have a blocking tight end, but if you put him in the game, the defense can't just see that he's a non-receiver and 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 deal with him as such. You need guys that can get that their presence can give you give the defense the idea that you can run or pass. I mean that's kind of the key. So the one thing that's nice about Latu is that he's a good receiver, but he's enough of a blocker to run the ball when he's in the game. The other thing I kind of like about him is I really think that there's of the guys that they have this guy's got the ability to kind of play faster in a year or two from now than he play, than he plays right now with more refinement in this offense with the Niner weapons um with as accurate as Brock Purdy has been throwing to the tight end I think Latu could become a real nice receiver um in time so there's a lot to like there there really is you know, he was. I there were other tight ends that I preferred, but I don't know that those tight ends move as well as this guy does, um, and, and potentially does down the road. The guys that were that are still on the board, they're guys that I think are have a little bit more sure handedness. They're guys that you know may have more experience, but as far as pure athleticism, I think this guy's got a little bit more athleticism. Now, I like the idea of Elijah Higgins from Stanford being, you know, used as a converted uh, wide receiver, but he's he can't stand it up against against a defensive end. You know, you can put this guy up against a, a big time defensive end, he's still going to be challenged, but not like Elijah Higgins. He's a legitimate legitimate all-around tight end. He can do it as a run blocker, he can do it as a pass receiver. As I said a couple times, he's a better receiver than he is a run blocker, but I think he's capable in all areas and that, that is important. All right, hope you enjoyed the 49er draft video. Uh, The Niners going tight end in round three to finish up day two of the draft. Keep it locked on the Krug Show all weekend long as we'll have all your top-tier Niner coverage right through the draft all the way into training camp. And thanks for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.